Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy, and I want to welcome you to our second live online Draw Together session. As you know, Napkin Academy in the past has typically been me drawing all by myself, but what's really cool as we move to the Draw Togethers is we're going to be joined by a second person who is drawing with us. And today, I am super unbelievably excited to invite Sunny Brown, one of uh -huh. my good visual friends, to join us online. Sunny, would you please say hello? Hi, Dan, and all the people. All the people. So, Sunny, you can join in. You can layer in anything you want as I pull this little bio. Sunny was okay. named one of the 100 most creative people in business, one of the 10 most creative people on Twitter by Fast Company. She is the best-selling author of The Doodle Revolution and Game Storming. And Sunny's TED Talk on doodling has drawn more than how many views have you had, Sunny? How many views have 1. you had? 1.2 now. 1.2 million views. No, and... I just mean 1.2. Oh. <laughs> 1.2 views <laughs> of her famous it. TED Talk. That's all I needed. Yeah. One person. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm really curious about who that point two person was. And you have been <laughs> featured in the New York Times and in the New York Post, the Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, uh, Wired Entrepreneur, as well as being featured twice on the beloved CBS Sunday Morning Show. Did Stunts. you even see that show? I have not. I don't watch the beloved CBS Sunday I, Morning. I, 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 Oh my God, apparently it's like six million viewers and it's, I mean, it's its weird. It's like there's an affection around it. But anyway, it's, there's no point. I wanted to know, I was just wanted to get angry with you if you hadn't watched my interview. I could that. lie to you and say, oh, Sunny, <laughs> yeah. I watched it twice. <laughs> yes. But I haven't. But let's, Sunny, I mean, let's let's talk about you for a moment. And, you know, one yeah. of the things that, that makes you you is the fact that mm -hmm. you have gone through the crazy process of writing a couple of books. And yeah. I know that a few years ago you worked on Game Storming. That was your first big book. Is that right? Yes. Um, it was a co-authored, so it was not quite as difficult as Doodle Rev. Okay, so tell us about that. So, so Doodle Rev, your more recent book, uh, uh -huh. challenging to put together? How was that? What was that like <laughs> to write that book? Well, you remember when I told you that when I talk to people, uh, I always start interviewing them. So I, all of a sudden, I have this impulse to ask you questions <laughs> because you've written more books than I have. And uh, so I want to hear, you know, we should have eggnog and talk about that. But um, but yeah, in summary, game storming was easier because I had co-authors and we part we partitioned the book. And so it just it, w it went very smoothly and very well. Doodle Revolution was like an absolute horrific nightmare of pain and angst. And so um, when people ask me, oh, do, do you think I should write a book? I say, no, absolutely not. You know, like, it's too crazy. It's it's a hard process. And I, I have been really down hard. that road a few times. And so, uh, I know. Sunny, I absolutely feel that pain. And. I know that we've got a number of people online with us who have talked with me or talked or presented ideas about wanting to write books. And, you know, it is hard, but would you agree that it's completely worth it, that the pain is? It's, it, you know, it's so funny that we're talking about this, and probably this will be cathartic for me because this morning I was talking to my husband about how much it sucks to be a person who has a strong impulse to create and to also still have to live your life responsibly and like to do raise your family and take care of yourself and um the two are at constant odds sometimes and um and there have been times when i've wished that i did not have the instinct the creative instinct to be honest <laughs> you it, know it can't, it can't it drives you to do things that you know yeah. just are an incredible amount of time yeah so sunny we've got one more picture page here who is sunny and this is the one where i get to do just a little bit of a warm-up sketch just on my powerpoint oh, good. so i would say okay. one of the things that i've always liked about sunny we met several years ago years is ago. as your name indicates that sunny you're one of the smilingest brightest people i've i've had a chance to get to know and so it's a pleasure to be able to share the screen with you as we go through our draw <laughs> together so are you ready ah, are you yes. ready to do our draw together Yes, okay, so I love here's it. here's the way this is going to work. There have to be rules, right? This okay. is a world of constraints and rules. Okay, so yes. select a topic. I've picked a bunch of quotes from uh, the Doodle Revolution, and you're going to get to pick one, and then we are going to draw it together. You, as the guest, start will start. You get to draw three lines, but no more than three lines. If you really okay. want to write something down, you can, but you can write no more than three letters, 
and then you'll okay. pass the pen over to me and we will talk as we draw, okay? Oh, okay, and then how do I pass the pen? Do I just say have you the pen? You just say I'm done and okay. I will just start drawing on the whiteboard and if you don't pass the pen, I'm just gonna take it anyway. Okay, this is so, the most delightful process. Go on. All right, so now, hidden behind these five doors, I've got five quotes from the Doodle Revolution. Sunny, which door would you like to go? Oh, okay. <laughs> number three. Door number three. And door number three says, oh, well, this is your quote. So, Sunny, can oh, you yes. read us your quote? What does it say? There shouldn't be limitations on the styles of learning available to us. Boom. Boom. I would say, okay, now we're going to switch over. Okay. So we've preloaded this so the quote appears on the screen for you. So Sunny, go ahead and activate your pencil. What color do you want to use? Uh, well, I'll use red because you're using blue, right? I'll go with blue. Okay, and I'm going large line. I'm going large line blue. Okay, Sunny, so there you go. You Start your drawing. And you oh, can talk man, as you draw. I can draw. only use three lines. Only three lines, because then you're going to have to hand it to me. There shouldn't be limitations on the styles of learning available to us. How would you draw a picture of that? Yeah, we can. It has. I it literally has it. nothing to do with. There we go. <laughs> Woo! There's just so you know, there's three of those now. <laughs> All right. We're gonna find. Okay, so that's your line number one. Only three. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, I know it's tricky, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but I like it because. Okay. It's waking up my it's waking up my cortex here. Okay. There it is. Ooh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. And Little I thought also, bubble. Okay. <laughs> um, there should not be. I have to get this feeling of it. Okay. Okay. I got it. I'm gonna use three letters. I'm gonna go for letters. Okay. Go for letters. Okay. There. Oh. Gonna... Oh. Can. Can. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go a slightly different path over here. So I'm gonna okay, say cool. that one of the ways that we might want to learn is the star way of learning and mm -hmm. another way we might want to learn is the circle way of learning and another way we might want to learn is the square way of learning so those are my three lines and what i'm trying to say is oh, those good. are different okay, ways of learning good. okay yeah um so now do i get three more lines now you do indeed okay then i'm gonna do you know that game where you don't pick up your um, pen? See how big a line you can draw without lifting up your pen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's, nice that's line. One, that's one line. Okay. And tell me what you think that means, too. We're, we're absolutely <laughs> okay to use words. Help me guide me okay. on this one. Okay. So this, this is a human person mm -hmm. who's embracing these learning styles. See what oh, happens. that is beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to riff off of your original person, and I'm going okay. to go with my blue line, and I'm going to say there shouldn't be limitations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent limitations on learning styles that people try to encroach upon us. Good, good, so good. So this person is blocked off with only these, and we're going to say those are two of my lines. So my third line is okay. going to be, I think, kind of... Um, I know. I know. Cause see, is. you know why this sentence is the challenging star, is because it's a the negative. The star mode is in here, is in their mind, and they're being told that's the only mode you can have. That's the only Good, way of perfect. thinking you can. Oh man, you're a natural. Have you done this before? Uh, yes, I've done this before. You, you're <laughs> good. I, look at that beautiful person drawing you did, embracing all of them. You know that game Cadavre et Kiss, that uh, it's like a French uh, line drawing game. Okay. No, I don't well, know that. Well, what is well, that? Oh, well, it's the same. It's the idea of uh, co-creation. So that because oh. that's what we're doing. That's but what you, we're doing. Uh, but you don't know where the, you don't know the end game. But you have so you sometimes have an impulse to control it, which is probably what's happening to Gee, you right now. Really? <laughs> And you don't get to know where what the outcome is. All right, so um, that's another line. You're in charge of this one. I think we're pretty close to getting this. There shouldn't be limitations. Yeah, I do. Too. I know, because see, it's the thing is there. There's a forcefulness in here that I that I want to emphasize somehow. But um, see, and it's interesting because we've taken it happy, and this is um, this actually is a is a negative de declarative statement, mm -hmm. but we've made it more about only can. Okay. That means oh, I want to switch colors. Okay. <laughs> What's, you had a circle and a square, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means these ones are left out. Exactly. Now you and I, see what the power of doing this? You and I are now coming <laughs> to see the same picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more line, and I'm going to say what Sonny is advocating. Here, here's the way I'm going to say it. You see these, these 
blue line boxes around this poor person being told you can only think in star way, you can't have squares and circles. What yeah. my take on the doodle revolution is no way, blow those out. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, and, and I'm going to break my own rule because I'm drawing kind of not three lines, but three things and move over here. That's what we want you to do. Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. I love that so much. Well, no, I think we should move on because I think we did communicate it, although there's an exclamation mark missing. Um, oh, here. This add is a I final line. Add a final line to it. I added a final three lines. Woo! Because now they're happy. Yeah. I think that was really nice. All right, Sunny, now that we're experts at it, let's do another one. Let's do a different one then, just for kicks. Let's do it. Let's, I don't even remember what number two is. Oh, okay. I love it. Let's go for number two. Read oh, this yeah. one, if you would. Oh, quote man, number that's two. such a good one. Damn it, that's a good one. Okay. What does quote number two say? Number quote number two says the doodle zone offers a blissful heaven from the incessant whirring of the mind. Mm. Ooh, that's some potent. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. So I want to move. Uh, explain to it. Let's draw a picture that explains to ourselves what this doodle zone is all about. Okay. I mean, these are good words. You already have blissful heaven, incessant whirring. I know whirring. incessant whirring. I'll bet no, you write. Got... I'll bet you enjoyed writing that sentence. <laughs> I actually enjoyed reading it again as well. <laughs> <laughs> not, that is true. It is always more fun to read the sentences after than trying to crap <laughs> them. Out. All right, so let's draw a picture of this one, Sunny. We're doing Do you good. Do crap yours out? <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I know. Just uh, put your hands on the keyboard and like just force them just, to start going. I know. You know how they say if you give a monkey enough time that would actually produce a novel? Proof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, proof number two. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let's right, talk okay. about this blissful heaven. Mm. All right, All right start. So, okay, First three line. lines. Okay, now I'm getting to get in the hang of it. So this Absolutely. You, you, we, you don't need to make a board game out of this. Okay. Um, um, patent that? I, yeah. <laughs> okay. You heard okay. it here first, folks, on Napkin yeah, Academy. Yeah. So there's my, um, there's my intro. That is a um, beautiful, beautiful drawing. You know what that is, right? That is the incessant whirling of my mind. That's correct. Yes. Okay, and there I had one more line available to me, so I made a dot. Well, I this I I actually I love this drawing. Okay, mm. so blissful heaven. Mm. So I am going to draw a counter item to what you've drawn over here. I'm mm. going to draw. It may be a bit of a trope. I'm going to draw a little bit of the zone of blissful heaven. Oh, I love that. So yes. calm. Oh. And of course, on calm, I don't know. I think, I do think sunny. When I think of calm, blissful, I do think sunny. Sunshine. Okay. So there we go. And so that's what I'm going to draw. Now, I'm just, I'm having a moment of empathy for the people who are participating. Because I bet y'all, are they drawing with us on their in their own land? Like a I hope so. Wonderful. I think they're so captivated by what you and I are drawing that they're just breathless <laughs> with anticipation of whatever line we might draw next. Either that or they're, they're like, why are these monkeys leading this process? Uh, when I look at you, look, I, 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 you know what? I think I'm doing, going to do a screen capture right now because okay. that drawing that you drew of the incessant whirring of a mind with one eye uh -huh. is pretty evocative. <laughs> I but know, now you don't that, get to stop yeah. there, so keep it going, keep it okay, going. Let's okay. talk about the doodle zone. Let's draw the okay. doodle zone. Yeah, the doodle zone, it's such a nice place. Okay, a blissful heaven. All right, okay, okay. So here she's un she's unhappy, she's tangled, she's a, uh, she's a, uh, I kind of want to complete her. Go for it. So I'm gonna just Up to give, you, yeah, your I picture. Give, I want to give her an actual being. Um, um, so yeah, I hope it's okay if I flesh her out a little bit. By all uh, means, your three lines, you can do anything you want with them. You've got two to go. I'm keeping track. I keep track. Okay, so, so, oh, wanna, wow. Yeah, okay. I really want to emphasize the, uh, the distinction between these two states of mind. Okay. Got it. Um, so this is an alternative universe, so I think I'm just going to do something simple to indicate that they're – Oh, so this is this is the difference. This is the mm -hmm. the before X's and, and the O's, the before and the yeah. after. Okay, yeah. so I get it. So she is down in incessant whirring of the mind land and is yeah. full of anxiety and discomfort mm -hmm. and mental overwhelm. Yes. And meanwhile over here, so fine. So what I'm going to do, 
uh, I now am going to make the bold move of finishing part of your drawing. Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, she needed that. She couldn't see. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's, and I, I what I really oh, wanted to do, gosh. I don't know how to do it, is I wanted to show, like, grrr in her teeth, like teeth gnashingly uh -huh. upset. Yes. Okay. I think you did. Look at that. That okay. is very, uh-huh, that's very clear. Now, okay. when you asked okay. a moment ago, were our other folks out in Napkin Academy land, of which we've got a, a, a huge group of people that are watching right now, are they drawing on their own? I don't know. Yeah. I hope, I certainly hope that some people are. I know that if I was on the other side, I mm -hmm. would want to be drawing with us. Yeah, I would be too. out there saying, damn it, Sonny, give me the pen. I want to yeah. draw because you're doing yeah, it all exactly. wrong. You're yeah. missing it. <laughs> so that's what I would be doing. Yeah, um, or, or at least make your own version. So you guys, yeah. if, you're not doing, if you're not doing that, start, start doing that because there's, there's a million versions of this. So yes. it's good practice. Yeah. So, Sonny, are you saying that your and my drawing is not the only visual expression of this quote? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, quote me on that. Put that in box number six. Uh, and, I, and as we're talking, I don't see any other lines emerging on here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you got to uh, draw uh, two. Oh, okay, okay. So this is going to be, um, I don't know how this will work. So I'm going to, oh, I need, uh, okay, I need it to be blue. I want it to be blue. Okay. Ready? Go. No, see, okay. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, this is a hard one. I'm very see, curious to could... see what, what, what is causing you so much angst right now. I feel like you're in that lower quadrant right now. Oh, man. And I you told you this was a tough so, 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 Sonny, <laughs> move oh, over. I'm gonna... I've got it. Just you saying that actually was really helpful because it made me realize that I don't need to overthink it. I need to do – I need to practice what I'm saying, which is enjoying the organic nature yeah. of, uh, of the doodle my own happy place. I'm making the clouds sort of undulate because it makes me feel better. Good. Yeah. And the cloud yeah. is certainly undulating. Right? Fabulous yeah, word, by the way. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that, you know what, that looks, that does look like a very happy undulating cloud. Doesn't I don't know, it reminds me, yeah, for some see. reason, this just makes me think of a nice, calm drop of water. Yeah. Just yes. be, be like water, says Bruce Lee. Just oh, my God, be Dan. I just, okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Are you doing the elaborate contour line trick where yeah. one line conveys multiple meanings? Yeah. Be like. <laughs> All right. You can pull that off. I get to do one more line then, okay? And I'm going to pick a different color because this is going to be the transition line. And what I, it's very mm -hmm. simple. Take your pen, mm -hmm. do your doodle, mm -hmm. and come to this side. Me? Oh, yeah, anyone. One. Oh. The great <laughs> one. <laughs> the doodle zone offers a blissful heaven from the incessant whirring of the mind. Oh. Sonny, I think we've done it. And look at us on we timeline. We're, we're right there. But I'll tell you what. One of the things mm -hmm. that I often ask people, of mm -hmm. course, uh, oh, listen to some of the comments that are coming in. Okay, I haven't really been checking these. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see. So Marco says that he's drawing. Good. Uh, oh, and Olivier says the game, actually, Olivier, I am going to turn on your microphone if I can find you. Here we are. Olivier, can you hear me, Olivier? Yes, I can. Olivia, hey. you were giving us the name of the of the French drawing game. Can you explain a little bit more about it? Yes, so it's called uh, Cadavric Ski. Yeah. And you, you play as a group and you start, the first person starts drawing uh, and he doesn't reveal his drawing to, to the others and he mm -hmm. folds the paper and just has like a couple lines sticking out mm -hmm. and then the following person continues to draw whatever the theme is or whatever. And then you keep unfolding, and at the end you unfold the whole thing, and then you you get uh, you get a, a surprise because you don't know what what pops up in in people's minds. So it's it's actually a great uh, doodling thing. Yeah, I love that he gave that clarification because uh, you know I'm a game facilitator, so I do a lot of game adaptations. And sorry, Dan, I interrupted you, but um, but the reason it's called Exquisite Corpse is because you do end up with sort of a like a macabre version of a body, you know, <laughs> in the original game. Um, so we should 
get together. And well, hey, a question for both of you, uh, Sunny and Olivier, on that. So when you start the drawing with your folded piece of paper, are you given a topic? Is there something that you're supposed to be drawing, or you just say go and draw anything you want? So that would be an adaptation of the original, I think. Olivier, Olivier you, still, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Um, I, I think I played this when I was a child, and yeah. we would... We didn't really have a theme, so uh, you. But I've know I know it's been used also in poetry. Uh, and it's been used in, in, in many in many genres. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's a great yeah. it's a great uh, practice. Um, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, and so just so y'all know that th that game is such a wonderful uh, opportunity for collaboration and for uh, creativity because you can, like Dan said, make topics around it. And it's it's full of surprises. And so anyway, I'm not going to go into teacher facilitator mode, but it's good it's good times. Debbie, do you in particular have any thoughts or any questions you might have for for Sunny that that uh, we could try to draw quickly? Yes, we captured some questions from our associates, and the first one is from Alan, and he wants to know. Um, in corporate America, do you see hand-drawn visuals being shared at only smaller level teams, like under 20 people, or do you see them being used in a wider level, potentially um, incorporating hand-drawn visuals into a large department or division presentations? Oh yeah, we and Dan, you could probably speak to that too. Well, I, I well I know from experience that it can be scaled upward. So I mean, we've taught. We, we just taught uh, in, in um, Tennessee 110 people um, actually across teams because most of the time at that point you have silos so you don't really have a coherent team at that scale but yeah we, we have we have many many times designed and led experiences where it's upwards of 200 people um, so, but are, so are you getting acceptance from from you know kind of that corporate hierarchy right because that, that's always the challenge especially for newcomers right they think that that they're going to be yes. looked down on whenever they try to use hand-drawn visuals. Right, that's right. And um, that is an inherent part of introducing anything that is unfamiliar, innovative, or strange. So, you know, having a hope or an expectation that people will be receptive or open is not really realistic. And it, I mean, while I wish people were that way, open-hearted and sort of embracing, that's not the case because they're stepping into unknown territory. So. Um, so I just know that going in that I'm not going to get buy-in from every single person and I'm not going to um, have uh, open arms, you know, all the time. But if you design a process that is valuable and meaningful, then at the end the work can speak for itself and it doesn't necessarily need to be justified up front. Um, but we get invited because we've kind of established some credibility in that space. Um, and in the early days, I just would do it anyway. I would do it even in the face of resistance because that's really um, sometimes the only way to make progress, you know. But I can relate. I mean, I'm sure you're having you're asking that based on some context that's personal to you. So I can talk to you about that offline if you want more specifics. Great, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Todd is writing in that it works great at the CEO level. I'm going to layer in, Alan. I'm keeping your microphone open because I think you've asked in many ways. As you make this move into corporate America, I think you've asked the central question. Does drawing work for executives? And I would say in my experience, and Sonny back this up or, or, or not, or talk about it, yeah. that I, it's a kind of a 50-50 crapshoot in the sense that initially the reason that someone might have contacted me or I'm assuming why they would have contacted Sonny is because they already recognize there's something valuable in visuals. Because if they don't buy it at all, they're just not going to call you. Or they um, have an HR department that does, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and I do the same thing that you do. So I go in there and I'm very careful in how I couch the language of what we're going to do. I do not say we're going to do a drawing class. I do not say yeah. we're going to do a class on even really creativity. I say we're going to do some training around uh, very powerful cognitive models for yeah. breakthrough thinking. And it just so <laughs> happens that those are visual and that just so happens to mean that we're going to need to use pictures. Something. Thinking. Um, but, you were, but you were doing um, this visual thinking work before you were an author. Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, in those cases, yeah. I did what you did. I would just draw the picture because I knew it needed to be drawn, and most of the time I'd show it to someone, and they'd say, that's cool, and sometimes they'd say, mm -hmm. what the heck is that? Get out of here. But there was a high enough win rate to where it always was worthwhile. 
Yeah, well, and, I, and I'm not even trying to plug game storming at this moment, but um, the use of uh, what I call provocations, so the use of visual thinking experiments and tools, it, like it's actually, the, to your point, you're in, the invitation is to a different type of cognition. It's not to drawing. And so a lot of times I don't even mention it. Like I literally have them solve a problem and I just say, okay, here's a big white space and we're going to solve this problem. So I want you to draw this, this, this. And I just don't even talk about drawing. And then it's like it's inherently integrated into the thinking experiment. And then that way their focus is on solving the problem and their focus is not on the visual language. Debbie, there's some questions coming in online. Do you have others that came in through the website? Yes, uh, we have a question from Gabriel. He was um, wondering how you get people interested in um, similar stuff as what you do, doodling, and how do you go about building an audience? Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, do I have an audience? I don't even know. You um, have an audience, Sonny. You do. You do and have you've got an audience right now, in fact. I know, and God bless them. Um, so the first question was, uh, say, repeat the first part of the question. How do you build connections to people who are interested in similar stuff as you do? Oh, okay, yeah. So let me answer that one first, and then I'll do the one, the second one. And and actually, I um I I think I did mine in a I don't know if this is a common way or if it uh, I know it was a useful way, which was I actually started a community. So it's called this Think. and you remember Dave. Dave will be on in a couple of episodes, but um, he he started something called this Think, V I Z Think, and I built uh, the community in Austin, Texas, at that time, and so that was actually the initial entry into a community of learning and experimentation, and I didn't know where it would go, and I had no intention of um, it being you know anything other than what it was, but it did certainly help to have like minds and. And so, and and what I, um, if that option was not available to me, then I would, I would, I think I would still go the community route because, like, meetup, you can make meetups, you know. It's like, but are those people significant in terms of building an audience? So what I've done is, as I was as I was listening to uh, the question, I was thinking, okay, so here's here's the thought leader, that's you, yeah. and over here is the person who is like-minded, and we're, I'm seeing how do you build this connection to them. Yeah. And then how can you take that connection to use it to get lots of like-minded people who, by the way, yeah. are no longer frowning but are now uh -huh. smiling uh -huh. uh, to create this kind of community? So in a way, well, can you give the, yeah. like some yeah. tactics around? Well, here's the most important question before any of that is answered, which is this. Um, so I would need to know from – who asked that question? Gabe? Gabriel. Gabriel. So this is what I need to know from you, you. Uh, because you can reach that goal uh, many different ways. And so the question really is, what is your goal? And then we work backward from that. That's how I would figure it out, is I would design backward from a very specific um, aspiration. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense for me. The thing is just like, for me, it's very difficult to get specific. Like, <laughs> for me as a kind of mm -hmm. person, it's, uh, I usually yeah. start out with very lofty ideas, and then... Uh, yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I, uh, I suspect, I Sonny, your answer comes from experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, and like I, I can relate to the... Because um, sometimes you're driven... I mean, I often have visions that are very fuzzy, and so I don't know how to lay tracks toward those things because they're not explicit. And so a lot, so I spend purposefully a lot of time making something fuzzy explicit. And you, and you know when it's explicit because it resonates with your core values. So I'm, I'm kind of taking you like upside down uh, from your initial question, but I think mm -hmm. actually answering that question skillfully requires answering those other questions. You know? So I'm going to visually summarize this, and then we're going to have to wrap it up by saying if I've taken my big cloudy goal and I've made mm -hmm. it fairly specific, in this case in the form of a box. I can then uh, make uh -huh. tracks that yeah. lead me to that. So under yeah. the vision of my big goal, I've uh -huh. got a specific thing to do, and I have a specific roadmap to get me there. And once I have that, then I can start to define how do I reach out to the audience and how do I build the community. Is and that, what resources do you need and all that What do stuff? I need? Yeah. Great. Yeah. I hate to say it because nobody's signed off after this, but we're going to have to wrap this up. 
whenever I see red lights blinking, that means there's something I have to pay attention to. And what I have to pay attention to is the fact that we've gone way over time, but it's been totally worth it. So Sunny, yeah. do you want to uh, give us one final Sunny Brown thought to kick us all off on our way as we go about the rest of our, our, our week and our trying to be more visual and trying to be more creative? Not to put you on the spot or anything. Well, no, it's just funny. I, like I told you, I'm in a philosophical uh, mood um, slash uh, depression. And so, oh, great. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to sign off with a, a Bukowski, which is don't try. But um, anyway, don't quote me on that. Uh, what I mean is, you know how on his gravestone it says don't, don't try? I did not Charles know that. Bukowski. No. Oh. <laughs> Charles Bukowski. You know Bukowski. I know who it is. is. Absolutely. Okay, Our fly okay. and everything else. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I interpret don't try as like a Jedi. And so most most people read that and they think nihilism. I read that and I think um, Jedi style where it's like, you know, do or do not don't try. But uh, I think that if I had one caveat today, it would be like, uh, just keep taking steps and don't strive so hard. Right. Like there's no you're, you're doing fine. Whatever you're doing oh. is fine. Yeah. Whatever That's you're pretty to lovely. Is per- it, it, so don't try so hard. Don't try so hard. Whatever you're doing is fine. <laughs> no, That's a pretty great fine. way to stop. So so one more time, yeah. Sunny. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're so cool. Oh, well, thank you. And hey, you all are. of you out in Napkin Academy land, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it has been yeah, a true pleasure. You. Yeah, it's delightful. I love you all. All right. <laughs> Can't end on a better note than that. <laughs> Take care, everyone. This is Dan and Sunny signing off from the Napkin Academy. Bye-bye.